welcome to the MB3 Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. School's out for summer. Yeah. But not in Equestria. I'm not in Equestria. Oh, God, that makes me sad. <laughs> Yet happy at the same time. I don't know. I mean, you know, there's pros and cons to everything. Oh, true that, true that. But anywho, in today's episode review, we are going to review Season 8, Episode 1 and 2, School Days, Part 1 and 2. And in this first part, part of Sparkle decides to open a school of friendship when the cutie map grows bigger to reflect the world beyond Equestria. So, yeah, that's gonna be fun. I can see nothing going wrong with this. Then again, I have my eyes closed. <laughs> yes, totally. But anywho, um, first impressions are in order. But by the way, um, before giving out the first impressions, should we give the first impression for both of them at the same time, or one of them at the one, or one by one? Uh, I view it as one continuous story, so I usually just, uh, I usually just treat it as one reaction. Ah, uh, all right. Yeah, if that's the case, I'll blur out the second part. In the second part, Twilight Sparkle and her students try to save the School of Friendship from being shut down by the Equestria Educational Association. So, yes, first impressions are in order, then. <laughs> yes, putting the ass in association. <laughs> Giggity. Well, my first impression, I really enjoyed this opening. It is it is very different from what we've come, become used to. You know, usually, Big Bad appears, Twilight and friends must rally to save Equestria. And then they do ma- magics, and then they go. They sing a song and go home. Not quite the same here. There is still much singing to be had. But the big bad is not that big, really. And it's more about setting up the new status quo, which we get a lot of status quos now, don't we? True that, true that. But what I like most about it is Twilight's autonomy. I'll get more into that as we talk about the episode proper. All right, then. And as for me... This episode was a different start. Like, usually we have the big bad or... hmm, Yeah, usually we have a scenario where a big bad evil comes to play and the crisis ends at part one and they solve it in part two. But in this one, it kind of follows the same flow of something bad happens in the first part and they resolve it in the second part, which is the status quo for most episodes, but in this one, it's different in terms of how they pull it off. I mean, there's no really big threat besides the school shutting down. The big evil person is kind of a, well, lack of a better word, bigot. And the episode flow seems fun. I I don't know, this episode is different, yet it feels the same at the same time too. I I think I'm maturing my words right now because I'm not I don't want to spoil the full episode yet. So yeah, I'm just dancing around the issues. But anywho, um let's head into the review. Um if you have not watched this episode, uh, pause here and go watch. Welcome back. I hope you enjoy the episode because it was a lot of fun. So anywho we start off with the shot of the throne room where uh, we get to see all the main eight in the throne room looking at the magical map growing. And they reminisce their time in the My Little Pony movie. And somehow that's canon. Yay. Main eight. It's cute you think Spike is that relevant. <laughs> he is! But he is! I know, just giving you grief. Oh. But still, um, I-, I do like the... Um, nice nod to the movie where um, Rarity says, "Oh, here's the play where here's the place where we were almost sold, and here's the place with the pirates, and here's the place with the sea ponies." And Starlight here asks, um, "Where is that um, broken horn unicorn that kind of enslaved Equestria?" Oh, I invited her in here. You can see her face growing worried. And but she said that she wanted to go around Equestria or beyond just to spread the word of the Storm King's defeat and also friendship. Yay! And to appear in the MLP comics later on. Yeah. In this month. I can't wait. Uh, so um, they all ponder about the map. Like 
is it because that we travel to these places and need to spread friendship beyond Equestria and stuff? Like, is that the reason why the map is growing? Hmm, how are we going to solve this problem? I mean, like, there's so many ways to do this. I mean, like, set up an embassy or set up some kind of thing or something like that. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of good ways to do this, right, Silver? Well, there's always the nuclear option. I, I do want to say that's on the table. You got a friendship problem? That's my easy button. That, that, that is an answer, but not a good one. But you know what? Uh, I I, <laughs> I, beg to, I beg your pardon. I believe that is quite an appropriate answer and very insightful. I am best ambidaster. <laughs> oh, yes. But um, uh, hmm. how, how do I even of put this? The, hmm. Twilight has the greatest answer of all, and that's to create a school of friendship. What? Well, here's the thing. When she says... I did take issue with when she said uh, there are places in the world that know nothing of friendship. It's like, okay, you do know that friendship is not exclusive to ponies. They may not make as big a hoopla over it, but we've seen that they have friends. Yes, that is true. Just like, Twilight, are you becoming an equestrian exceptionalist? (laughs) Just try and picture Twilight with a bad uh, haircut and slightly more orange fur. I love Equestria. It's the friendliest <laughs> place. It's fantastic. Oh no, no, no! But rest of rest of the world doesn't know doesn't know much about friendship. It's sad. It's so sad. No, but uh, okay. Here's the thing. I, I'm going to put a pause before we continue on. A lot of people have been um, messaging me, or a lot of people have been talking to me about the start of the season. Um, I think. Starstream, one of the Patreon supporters, haven't watched it yet because he's turned off by the idea of a school of friendship ah. as a gimmick. To him, it's kind of another way to sell more toys. Others have been talking about it's a stupid idea and so on. And I am in the middle of all this. Like I do understand why Hasbro's doing this because to sell toys. I'm not a fan of the idea, but the way they implement it is pretty cool. But, uh, I don't know, I mean, what what do you think, Silver? Being super serious right now, here's the thing. Twilight has always been reactionary in how she approaches things. There's a big bad coming, oh, I will go to this place and I will get the yada yada, and that will banish him with the power of sparkles. Mm -hmm. How fitting for Twilight. Uh, The Oh, the map is telling me I must go here. I will go here and spend some time trying to figure out what the heck the map really wants me to do. But here, the map is a factor. It's saying, oh, it's expanded. It might call on her later for a big thing. But in the here and now, she has a certain autonomy. She has this chance to say, okay, we're presented with a problem and no one is telling me what to do. So for really the first time, perhaps in the entire series, she gets to make a choice. I mean, I know that sounds cynical and people will point to, you know, wanting to go to Ponyville to stay with her friends. But even then, Celestia basically gave her blessing. And so, I says to myself, I says, I think this school is really fun because it seems like something Twilight would do. I mean, she has a great uh, respect for academia. And it's something uh, that she pursues actively on her own. Like I say, for the first time in the series, that's something special for me. There is the very real question of how are her friends supposed to teach at a school when they are also party planners, bakers, uh, farm workers, fashion designers, Wonderbolts, Fluttershy. I still don't know what the heck she does. (laughs) I mean, the whole Sweet Feather Sanctuary thing really just, it's good, but I don't know. But don't you feel that this is kind of out of left field? Like, there's no... Um, what do you call this? Like, what, um, I think the Chekhov's gun kind of situation where she never really presented the idea before. It's like, what? Suddenly? No more suddenly than than saying, oh, she's ready to become an alicorn. Or, oh, there's a new threat. Let's uh, give her a box. What's in the box? <laughs> Who gets the box? How much is the box worth? Yeah, true. That's Star true Wars. <laughs> in truth... I'm afraid it's a conditional of the show that there are some things that happen more spontaneously than others. Let's also give credit 
Celestia manages to not get kidnapped this premiere. Yay. That's something rare, rare and unique too. That's true. What's up? That's true. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, the school concept and idea, I'm fine with it. It's just the execution of it at the very, very start. It's like out of nowhere. Like they were talking about the My Little Pony movie and so on. I mean, at least if they were talking a bit more about it, like and stuff, uh, I don't know. I mean, they could have gone so many ways with this. It feels like the blimp situation with Hasbro and the show. Hasbro wants to sell a blimp. How do they introduce a blimp? Okay, we just put it in the darn opening. There you go, Hasbro. Happy. I'm on a blimp. <laughs> I'm on a blimp. Uh, Look at me, everybody, because I'm on a blimp blimp. <laughs> yeah. uh, but still, I mean, um, putting that aside, uh, let's carry on. So, anywho, the next day, Twilight goes to Celestia asking her for guidance and... Is this the first time we see the school proper? Well, first off, I, I don't even know if it's been a day. No, given this show's rather skewed sense of time, uh, they may have very well, it may be that afternoon of the same day she made this decision. Uh, true, true. But I'm just going to say the next day because it's much better. She gave, let her time to think or sleep on it and something like that. I mean, we don't even know when this happens like it could be after the party from the movie see see this is this is where uh we need like a clock just a 24 clock in the corner <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <clears throat> yeah anywho uh this is the first time we've seen celestia's school in modern day other than when uh twilight lemon hearts twinkle shine and uh minuet went to visit to reminisce but it was deserted then mm -hmm. could be vacation and i think this is the first time the school is shown in modern day in the series proper because we did get more views of the school in the comics if i'm not mistaken the one where twilight had to take care of spike and also in well, what else other that story i don't remember but i think there is in the comics some you know, there was the school of friendship with uh, where Twilight basically became a single mom at Philly Hood. Celestia, that was not cool. Mm -hmm. And also the one where Celestia was talking up one of her best friends slash teachers. That one, yeah. That one was so far in advance, however, that it didn't really look like the school from the show. Oh, yeah, true. At least it had an appearance. Either way. Yep, yep. Let's carry on. So um, Twilight visits Celestia asking for advice and whatnot. And here is where we get introduced to the EEA, the Equestrian Education Association, where they have standards. They have standards, yet they hired Naysay. Uh, oh, the contradiction. Oh, yeah. But still, uh, beforehand, now Twilight has a uh, guidance on what to do. And yay, she visits the EEA. And oh my God, why does the EEA... <laughs> I'm never going to get used to saying that. But anywho, uh, why does the association look dark, grim, and foreboding? Because they're part of the every Philly left behind strategy. Oh, okay. I will say, equestrian parents are so very cruel. Why would you name your child Nay? Say nee. that's just setting them up up to be disappointed. <laughs> Nay, <Nee>. it's lie. <laughs> would it really be so hard to name your kid Butch Pants McKickass <laughs> and see if he becomes an? An action hero. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, well, rainbow Dash seems cool, too. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I mean, you know, the the rainbow main, it works. But I'm just like, why is there no... I guess I want to just work Butch into something. Butch McClobber face. <laughs> Ooh, Butch McTaser face. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. There we go. The, the new OC. Stay tuned for the adventures of Butch McTaser face. Oh, gosh. Uh, but anywho, uh, we, we carry on with uh, Twilight meeting the association. And the association, the association has high standards in their educational system. Uh, Twilight's presented a book and yes, Twilight read it up on it and presents her school's curriculum and whatnot. And they are so good at speed reading. I know. It reminds me of Doctor Who. Well, Twilight blazes through a book. Uh, the naysay flips through it and just like... They know it right off the bat. It's just like, what? I am so jealous. Same here. Same here. I wish I had that talent. But at the same time, too, we are kind of 
missing an important fact here and said fact that uh, Chancellor Naysayer here is voiced by the brain from Pinky and the Brain. How can I describe this? Cranky Doolin Rhinox voiced a gangster who fought a barbarian, an NBA all-star, an anthropomorphic tomato, and a monster truck in a TV show. Believe me, it's a small industry. True that. It's a weird industry. True that, true that. Hey, but still, uh, having Marcus Limerick, Limerick oh, I've, you know what? I'm not even going to attempt to say his name. I know I'm going to get it wrong, but say, uh, having the brain here would be fun. Now all we need is Rob Paulson and yay, reunion. Well, technically all he needs to do is... Uh, Talk to Andrea Liebman. Hey, Nace, hey, what do you want to do tonight? The same thing I do every night, Pinky. Try to start an international war. <laughs> oh, gosh. Before we head to that, um, Chancellor Nace approves of the opening of the school because it's for the protection of Pony Kine. Yes, Pony Kine. All this talk about ponies have a right to defend themselves. Like, it's like, oh, okay, are you the EA or the NRA? <laughs> oh, don't take away our friendship. <laughs> They come to, they're coming to take our friendship. They can have it when they cry from my cold, dead hooves. Okay. <clears throat> so, in, in the next scene, we are introduced to the School of Friendship, which I'm just going to... Th- that, yes. that was fast. I'm going to say, even though I'm the one who, who talks about, you know, the flexible time uh, table in this show, good grief and good gravy, does that thing grow out of the mountain? Did Twilight just... Uh, channel the magic from the the castle to uh, create this new school? And if so, what do the equestrian labor unions have to say about that? <laughs> oh, well, um, I'm just going to say that uh, a couple of months later... <laughs> and for all we know, this was next week. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. <laughs> but so, anywho, um, school is um, erected and we get to see the main six, or, well, at least Twilight's friend, in the school getting ready and whatnot. Like, they're kind of excited and nervous about it. Rainbow Dash doesn't seem that she's confident about it because, oh, I'm no teacher. I'm a speedster. I don't know how to teach. And Fatisha is trying her best to, you know, be a teacher and stuff. I hope you enjoy, but if you don't, that's all right. Oh, wow. And, of course, it's Angel there to, to give her the head... The face palm. <laughs> Fur palm. Yep. No, it... it yes. Pop palm. <laughs> pop palm. Yeah. Oh, pom pom. Yay! Pop palm. Cell phone. But before everybody has their doubt, Twilight comes in and says, don't worry, guys. We're going to do everything by the book. And that way, nothing can go wrong at all. Famous last words. <laughs> so, yes. Um, Applejack says, okay, let's greet every pony. Yeah, but before... Um, the doors open. Twilight says, yeah, about that. Doors opens and what? We are greeted by creatures? What? And I think it's worth noting that Starlight says, there, if Twilight's not worried, none of you should be worried either. And I thought, yeah, that's part of the autonomy. Finally, Twilight is not at the mercy of what other people are telling her to do. Ergo, she can have some confidence. Gosh darn it. True that, true that. And yeah, um, <laughs> uh, it seems that, yeah, Many creatures are coming in from the yaks, griffins, changelings, and dragons, all of Equestria's allies. The zebras and the buffalo can just sit on the sidelines. Offer moral support from afar. We like you! Also got a message from someone stating that what happened to the rest, like the cows, the sheeps, and the zebras, the buffaloes. Yeah, what happened to them? <laughs> Well, let's be honest. The the sheep and the cows are second class citizens, <laughs> forced to li- forced to live on Applejack's farm. They have no access to an equi- to the education system, and they would write in protest, but none of them learned how to write. Oh, it's so tragic. <laughs> oh gosh. But anywho, um, Twilight seems to uh, left out that fine detail about having other creatures being there but she did say uh, she asked Celestia for help and here we are we are introduced to the um, I think as EQD calls them the young six was it oh the school six the student six I think um, it's here yeah. S- student six I go by studious but yeah student six I-, I like to call them the young six I-, I don't know that's just me let me just call them the spare blood <laughs> why 
You're not my friends. You're my bodyguards. Gosh. If, if you make it a week, I'll learn your name. But until then, you're spare blood. <laughs> oh, well. So, anywho, um, we're introduced to Sandbar uh, Gla- Gladius. Gladius? Oh, Gallus. Gal- yes, Gallus. Um, let's see. We are introduced to Prince Rutherford's student, Yona Mulder Ocellus. Ocellus. Yes, Ocellus. Uh, who else? Sand- no, Sandbar's one. Who is the... Um, Silver, yeah, Silver Stream. Did I get them all? You forgot the hippogriff. <laughs> Darn it. My bad. You forgot the hippogriff. My bad. How could you forget the hippogriff? I'm sorry. But anywho, um. I'm sorry. But, uh, <laughs> but anywho, before we carry on, I-, I need to ask who's your favorite out of the first introduction of these characters? Like, initial impressions, really? Well, this wouldn't really happen until the second part of the episode. But I actually like Sandbar the most right really, now. Really, no. I, to- I can totally say I enjoy Silverstream introduction here. Like, Silverstream was so hyper and she's so cute. The way she reacted to everything was so much fun. It'll be, how do I put this? Us being there and reacting to all the amazing things that we see. I'm, I'm concerned I would be more like Ocellus, but... Apparently, you didn't like Silverstream enough to remember her name. I'm sorry. It's one of those situations where I don't read that much fan fiction involving them. You, you did remember the Hippogriff Dormat. I'm sorry. I'm, si- I'm sitting right here in front of a computer half a world away from you. <laughs> but technically, I do you. remember one Hippogriff, Silver Quill. So that counts, right? And I'm not canon anymore. Of course, I never really was, but still. <laughs> You're still canon in my head. <laughs> head canon doesn't count. Uh, but still, but still. Yeah. Um, we were introduced to the um, Student 6 or the Studious 6 or whatever you want to call them. And yes, uh, Twilight says, welcome to the School of Friendship. Your first day in school starts. So yay, we have this musical montage where everybody's having great time everybody's learning about your friendship and whatnot everybody's worried about passing on the first day it's like if you fail on the first day it just was not meant to be oh we, we'll get to that later we'll get to it that was later. not meant to be In episode 12 we'll get to that later so yes uh, everybody's having fun until party pooper twilight comes in and says no this is not by the book you can't do this this is terrible you must follow everything by the book and I just have to say, Fluttershy's method of teaching seems legit. To, to get to know the animals is to be upfront with them and learn that they're not mean. They're just following what nature tells them to do. And parties, um, laughter, Pinkie Pie has to do what she needs to do. As for Applejack, Rainbow Dash, um, Rarity, I'm not 100% sure how their methods are working, especially for Applejack. Bucking... App- yeah. Well, th- there's clear produce bias in our schools if she's exalting uh, apples over strawberries. And I can only imagine Strawberry Sunrise is probably out front protesting. <laughs> yeah. But but anywho, by the end of the montage, everybody's bored, including the teachers. So we meet up with the students and the students say that, oh gosh, the pony teachers are boring and they are the savior of Equestria. Like, oh, yeah, right. Sandbar here says, they are. I mean, is this is just not their normal forte. Usually they come in guns a blazing and boom, pam, boom, to the moon. And yeah, awesomeness happens. Yona and Gladys. <laughs> How do you say his name, Silver? Gallus. Yes, Gallus. So just think, you've got the main six. There are a bunch of uh, these girls. They all were gals, us. <laughs> Gallus, thank you. So Gallus and Yona here almost go into a scuffle. And yeah, the teachers have to step in and say, um, what's this fighting all about? So yeah. Every- We're just having a friendship discussion. Yeah, with our fists. Whoa, oh, you've watched the G Gundam method. <laughs> yeah. I mean, isn't that uh, every anime? As fighters, we can only convey our feelings with our fists. Yes. Which, which makes Valentine's Day very difficult. Yes, and to find the answer. The answer lies in the heart of battle. Believe in the heart of the fists. <laughs> yes. Ah, uh, Yugi, he's attacking me with the heart of the fists. What do I do? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Just give up. Uh, but anywho, 
the teachers, all of them go to Twilight and, well, complain and stuff, saying that there's fights and whatnot, and we're not doing awesome at this, and Rainbow Dash says, I don't look like this, because there's a picture of her in the leg and stuff. Uh, yes, everybody's having their troubles. And Twilight says, chill, guys. Follow everything by the book, and everything will be just fine. Anyway, uh, today is parent-teacher day and whatnot, so chill. It's going to be all good. So we head to the next scene. The students want to cut class because, hey, um, sticking in class where everything's boring is boring. So why not we go have fun? So having fun it is. And here's the thing. This is why I like Sandbar. He, he goes along to supervise the group. I mean, he's not the most eccentric personality, but he's the he's the even keel of the group. Mm -hmm. He's what keeps them on track when truly they could have just fallen apart right away. Oh, no. Right. Oh, no, Silver. You know what this means? He's the apple check. I know. (laughs) Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Yes, he's he's the apple check of the group. Good luck, then. Yes. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. (laughs) So, anywho, before they even get out the door, uh, a teacher comes by and said teacher is Fluttershy. Quick thinking, Ocellus transformed into Rarity, darling, and states that she's taking them out on a field trip, darling, to the lake, darling, darling, darling. You know, it's funny. She's Apparently, she learned that from Pinkie Pie. <laughs> darling, yes. Who was, who was describing it. Or maybe uh, Darling Dash from, G, from uh, G3. Oh, gosh. Yes. Yes, darling. <laughs> darling, darling, darling. Yeah. So we go to the next scene where Starlight talks to Twilight about her concerns. And yes, before anything, we get this cool portal opening where it's Naysayer coming in, going to check on the whole event and whatnot. And yes, the oof. let's just say that thing doesn't go well. I'm just going to fast forward a bit because the students are in the lake. Dash lose a student, we walk around, and yes, students have fun and teachers don't. But also, Naysay teleports with the portal to hell. Oh. That is a portal to hell. Well, well, his teleportation spell is creepy, yes, but it's effective. It's from hell. It's demon spawn. Uh, probably, I don't know. But anywho, uh, we go to Friends and Family Day, where every representative and every teacher, parents, and so on, are there. We get to see Silver stream i don't know who's the father i forgot his name silverhawk oh now now you're just playing to my nostalgia <laughs> uh but no that that is uh that's not her father really although no it is his father nope nope nope, no? nope. he never says he's his father he's her father he just says that he is part of her majesty queen novo's royal navy yeah but he is the father because didn't we see him again in the uh, the episode that I'm blanking right now? Not that I'm aware. General Sea Spray. General Sea Sway of Her, Her Majesty Queen Novo's Navy. Now, fast forward, looking through transcripts. Surf and or turf. Let's see here. Do they mention Seas? Do they mention Terramar's parents' name? I think so, yeah. Do, do, do. I know the mother is named, but where is Silverstream? Okay. Terramar's father is Skybeak. Skybeak. Oh yeah, my bad, my bad. He doesn't. It's not the same. It's not the same. So it's General Sea Spray and Skybeak. And if you say that all hippogriffs look the same, then I'm going to have to pretend to be very indignant, even though I agree. No, no, it's just the main color. Like it's one of those scenarios where sorry. <laughs> when it comes to hippogriffs, you're either uh, unique and interesting, or you're not me. <laughs> Don't know what that. Uh, the only memorable hippogriff I can remember is you. Oh wow! It sounds like I'm. <laughs> it sounds like I'm kissing up to you, but no, it's not. It's just that you have a very interesting design, while the uh, show cannon doesn't. <laughs> oh, the show cannon! I like the show cannon. Design. Oh yeah, it's true. It's just, They're good, but I ain't gonna change for it. Yeah, true. You ain't the boss of me. I wanna be the minority. <laughs> uh, but still, um, well, we see every uh, creature over there having fun and whatnot. We are introduced by some big creature chasing down the students. Oh no, the horror. And everybody goes into a panic. Hey, hey, little derpy, there you are. 
and Chancellor Naysayer says, Oh gosh, no, we are attacked. Stop this hooligan. What is this? What? There are these students? Horumph, horumph, horumph. We must get them out of here. Horumph, horumph, horumph. After he cowers behind Twilight, it's like, yeah, you really are a toughie. Yeah. And here is the scenario where when I first saw Naysayer say what he said, I'm like, whoa, um, what now? Uh, we, we, what, what? You, you're kind of, um, racist. Speciesist, but the f- sentiment is still there. Yeah, yeah. It's like, what the, the, the they're, the, they're all, all of those other creatures are Celestia's friends. They're the ally to Equestria, and you're saying that, ooh, someone's going to be in trouble? Technically, he should be. He's just caused an international incident. Indeed. Even um, Thorax here is saying, like, oh, we don't want a national incident. Oh, we're not ready. Well, well, Thorax, he's become king of passive aggressive. Oh, yeah. I know not everyone thinks the way you do. We're used to it. Oh, Thorax, I'm playing the world's smallest violin over here. <laughs> oh. And I can do that because my character has digits. <laughs> uh, but still, uh, national incident aside... Every creature uh, pulls their student out of the school, and the school is, well, closed because it doesn't meet the EEA standards. Ooh, ah. And episode ends. What a cliffhanger. Ooh. It is in the sense Twilight had found something she wanted, something that she pursued with all her passion, and it's taken away from her. Mm -hmm. And that's a bitter feel. And boy, does it set the stage for... Gollum Twilight. Oh, yeah. Arr, the, the natural lights. <laughs> yeah, and this sucks. I mean, some part of me kind of understands the whole scenario here, why Nacia is doing this, but he could have done it much more elegantly rather than what he said and whatnot. I mean, it's true that it doesn't follow the EEA standards, but having calling out the other creatures for not their fault, especially the Yaks, I know how much you hate the Yaks, Silver, but I don't think he, they deserve this. I will agree. The Yaks don't deserve that. They just... Yona is adorable enough that I can overlook some Yak tendencies. Maybe it's because I can see her eyes. She's more trustworthy <laughs> because she has eyes. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Like, the Yangans have eyes. Is that ballast of me? Uh, nah, man. Like, even in the show when we get to see the Yangans in their eyes. Like, yeah. But anyhow... Ballin'. <laughs> But anywho, we go to the second part, and yes, we get to see Twilight mope and bury herself under a pile of pillows. And Spike says that, yo, Twilight, this is out of getting out of hand. I mean, sure, the EEA closed your school of friendship, but now you got time to do other stuff. It's like a big vacation. <laughs> okay, that's on par with uh, Waka in Final <laughs> Fantasy X. <laughs> big happy fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. I broke a Norman. Oh, no, Waka reminds me. Okay. Oh, wow. Been watching the best friends play um, Final Fantasy X. And it, when I played the game first, I didn't really think about it. But after looking at them play it, yeah, um, Waka is like Naysayer. He's a racist. Oh, yeah. He's a pure racist. <laughs> ah, yes. <clears throat> but anyway. <laughs> Uh, Spike. Yeah. Big happy fireworks. Yeah, Waka, shut <laughs> up. Just shut up. You shut your face forever. But still, uh, let's see. Um, Spike comes in and says, Yo, Operation Cheer Up is a go. So yes, uh, everybody comes in to try and cheer Twilight up. And yes, uh, everybody fails because Twilight doesn't really feel like being cheered up right now. So Oh, but they don't, but they don't fail. Because what is the goal to get her to stop moping in her room? And while she may not, we, she may still be engaged in mopage mode, she left the room. Yeah, because everybody's in there, so she wants to be alone. But that succeeds in getting her out the door, and in doing so, she gets to go to see Starlight. I know Starlight here is just awesome. Like Twilight says, "What you gonna? You, you're here to cheer me up too?" And Starlight says, "Nope, I'm just gonna say what you did wrong." <laughs> Ah, uh, she's got that teaching method down. Yep, she got tough you love. You did it wrong! <laughs> she got tough love. Uh, but still, 
Starlight here speaks the truth because she's talking from experience. She's speaking the truth because Twilight trusted in her and Twilight believes in her and wants to help her move on and succeed. And with that, she kind of did. And look at her, look at her now. And Twilight is just saying, but EEA! Starlight just says, forget the EEA. This is a special school. This is a different kind of school. You can write the rule book. Do it, young Padawan. Good, good. Feed me your academia. <laughs> and so she does. I just love it if Starlight had said, fudge the system. Yeah! Oh, 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 they did it once. Who gives a flying feather about the system? You can write your own rule book. You know, I would expect Fluttershy to say something like that to Naysay. Mm. Feather you, you <laughs> piece of shale. <laughs> yeah, oh boy. But anywho, um, in the throne room, Twilight barges in and says, Yay, guys, I'm not depressed anymore. And the school is back on. And everybody says, Twilight, that's a terrible idea. I mean, we all failed. We all feel so hard. And this might be why Starlight is needed for this role, because oh, her friends want her to be happy, but they also have an agenda. Yep. Well, they, they don't mind helping. That's the thing. They don't mind helping, but they fail because we don't know how to teach. We're no teachers. We can walk the walk, but we can't talk the talk. Rarity can wear the dress, but can she really walk it like a runway? Yep, that is true. We know Fluttershy can. And Spike even mentions that you want to reopen the school, Twilight, but it's not even EEA credited. And Twilight does the eye thing. I twitchy twitch, twitcher, twitcher, twitch. And with this, Twilight says, no problem. Um, you guys go get the students. I'll deal with the school. We get to see all of the other ponies going to their respective, uh, respected um, creatures and saying that they're sorry and saying that the school's open. Pinkie Pie goes visit Prince Rutherford. That's the logical choice. Rarity visits Amber. Fluttershy visits Torex. Applejack visits the uh, Hippogriffs. And Rainbow Dash visits the Griffin. And it is revealed to us that all the students are missing. Oh no! Err. Although Applejack visits the Hippogriffs. Is that meant to be a commentary on... That they're so unmemorable now. Oh, so mean. But, you know, I, I do wonder, why Fluttershy visiting Horex? Wouldn't Starlight or Spike would be better for this situation? Well, I guess because they're official teachers, where Starlight is guidance counselor. Yeah, true that. It's just in my head that um, Pinkie Pie and Rainbow Dash are the logical choice. But it's just like Applejack, Rarity, and Fluttershy are a bit off in my head. I mean... If you want to really say something about it, Rarity kind of fits there because she's been there before. Well, I mean, I can imagine Starlight doesn't re isn't really keen on going back since how last time she nearly doomed the entire hive. Oh, true that. Also, while Thorax is the leader of the Changelings, send Pharynx to talk to Naysay. We'll see how long that attitude of his lasts. Yep, yep. But anywho, um, let's head to the next scene where all of the leaders... Um, well, quote-unquote leaders, visit Equestria asking about their students. Like, uh, before um, the student went missing, before the student went missing, we got a note by from them saying that they don't want to leave and whatnot. And Twilight here says, Ooh, they learned friendship! Yay! I, I mean, oh no, that's terrible. Mm, yes, that's terrible. Mm -hmm. And that was fun for a while, but now we have Starlight going, Oh, that's so devious. Oh, uh, please continue. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, I can't wait to review that one. We'll get there. Yeah. Oh, the faces, the faces. But anyway, um, the everybody's throwing down. Everybody's pointing fingers at everybody and whatnot. The uh, the yaks are blaming the changelings and whatnot. And even Amber is blaming the changelings. And Torex says, "Um, but we're friends." Yeah, it's like Ember, you're pulling a naysay here. Oh, it's just her rage. In all honesty, I see those two as a cute couple. I thought you were cool, Ember. Be cool, Ember. Yeah. Be Kember. <laughs> uh, well, but anywho, um, Princess Celestia whispers to Twilight, saying that, Twilight, go look for the student before we have a international situation in our hooves. Please, I, I do not want to go to a war, especially not with these creatures, because it will be so easy. 
<laughs> yeah, I still think Celestia would dominate Yak Yak. Yep. <laughs> well, there is the uncomfortable thing. Celestia is once again very passive in her leadership. And in some ways, I think that makes sense. This is Twilight's dream, Twilight's school. Twilight should take point. But this is also Princess Celestia, and the whole world is being affected by this. You don't want to see her just sort of sitting and waiting for something to happen. Oh, true. But I think off screen, we get to see Celestia calming everybody down and trying to defuse the situation here. Because um, from the point of view of the show, it's not Celestia and friends. It's Twilight and friends. So it does make sense that way. Sounds like a sitcom. Twilight and friends. Celestia and friends. But unfortunately, because it's off screen, we don't really get to see it. That's yeah. the, that is the sad part. I'm a sad t- hypocrite. Yeah, I do, sad I do want to see Celestia and friends at, at some scene. Like That would be fun. But hey, um, we're given what we're given. So uh, in Sugar Cube Corner, we get to see everybody hurling down and discussing the situation. Like, okay, we got Smolder, we got Oscillus, Silverstream, Yona, and Gallius. They're missing. So what do we do? Where are they and stuff? And they discuss and stuff. And the door to Sugar Cube Corner open. And oh, we see Sandbar there picking up cupcakes. Okay. And he seems rather suspicious. Hmm. Oh, it could be nothing. I mean, everybody buys a box load of cupcakes for parties, right? I mean, like, parties, right? Parties. And let's face it, some folks go to Pinkie Pie and they start shaking in terror too because it's Pinkie oh, yeah, Pie. True that, true that. I mean, I, I would be sweating bullets if I get to meet Pinkie Pie. I'm just saying, I, I don't know what would happen if I go into Sugar Cube Corner. There's probably lots of explosions. Oh, true that. Lots and lots of explosions. And Rarity here says something about if we were told that we we're not going to be able to see our friends, what would we do? And someone brings up probably will hide away and not be in the public eye. They point out that Sandbar just bought a box of cupcakes and he also bought a crate of or wagon of apples and he also got some blanket and pillows. Oh, that means Sandbar know where the other students are. Let's chase him down. Let's kill him. For the information, yes. I just, I see it. Have him to a chair. Fluttershy can be bad cop, bad cop. Pinky can be good cop. Oh wow! They get their roles mixed up easily. <laughs> yeah, and we, we go to the castle of the two sisters. Hey, this place is getting more. What you call this uh, play? Yay! Awesomeness. Continuity. So we get to see the other students there. Yay! Um, they're hanging out. They're having fun, and Senbar comes along with the supplies to feed the friends. And yay, they're having fun. They're talking and whatnot. And suddenly, Silverstream discovers the wonders of stairs. Ooh. And everyone's just like, uh, yeah, they're stairs. What? And she explains that sea pony fins, we don't really have the use for stairs. And then everyone's like, oh my god, she changed without the pearl. What's going on? I don't understand. Ah! We'll be explained later on. We'll be explained later on. (laughs) <laughs> but anywho, um, disaster happens when a cute, cute creature comes along. Uh, bushwoolies? No, they're not bushwoolies. What are they called? Pugwoolies. Yay. So, Ocellus decides that, hey, I read about them in the school book that Professor Fluttershy talks about. So, let me try and transform into them and make friends. Yeah, they ain't no friends. And then they try to destroy them. The destroying of the outsiders. Destroy them. They are not of us. They must be purged. The great pincushion in the sky demands it. <laughs> yeah. And so they're being cornered. And uh, if we're going down, we're going down as friends. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to die. <laughs> well, there is that. Why do we all have to die for this? <laughs> this is dumb. School of Friendship is dumb. Let's not die for the School of Friendship. Uh, but before they could regret their decision, um, the main seven, or main eight, comes along and save the day. Yay! Awesomeness. And the shipping fuel intensifies as Twilight and Starlight touch horns. Oh, gosh, no. Yes, their spell is fueled by the power of shipping. I approve. Yay. 
But anywho, everybody was impressed about the main eight and how they did awesomely in uh, defeating the what was it, pup woolies or pup budgies or whatever they call. I just love that scene where they launch them out of party cannon and they all have individual. Uh, parachutes. It's so thoughtful and adorable. I know. And especially the one that's minked up. Uh, thank you, Rarity. And, and the truth is, I, I, I crack up every time I see that scene. <laughs> uh, yes. So, anywho, Twilight proposed that every creature come back to the school and let's continue learning and stuff. Or there'll be an international incident. So, it's your choice, really. And all the students just look at it like, what? Yep. Just think, Silverstream could have been the face that launched a thousand ships. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but anywho, we go back to the school, and every creature's there, including their uh, leaders. And, well, they're being forced to go back to their own countries. But they don't want to, because they want to stay at school. And Ember points out, the school's closed. How can you even be in school? There's no way to go into a school. This is pointless. And Twilight says, But I say, I shall break the seal and school's open. And then Nase just summons up from the depths of hell. Who dares challenge the branding? And he says, Your school is not EEA accredited and stuff. Like, you cannot open this school. This school is not for ponies and stuff, blah, blah, blah. And Twilight says, True, but this is not an EEA school. This is a school of friendship. Here is my rule book. It's much more bigger than your rule book. Mm. Uh, as, an, as we all know, the bigger rule book wins. Basically, having a measure, measuring contest with Naysay. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, please. If you're having a measuring contest with a mayor, you have the world's cruelest handicap. Oh, yes. <laughs> Uh, wh- why do I have the feeling that um, even Twilight's rule book is going to be trumped by the Magic the Gathering rule book? I don't know. I've never played Magic the oh Gathering. My God, it's go- you're going to get trumped by it. Like, oh, this, the rules and the subsection rules. Uh, I remember trying to look for a rule about something and it had subsections. Like, this is just wanting to know what would happen if a creature dies. <laughs> I love it when a creature dies. It's fantastic. You, you, you said trumpet, so... I'm trumping it. (laughs) Oh, boy. So, anywho, one musical montage away, and the students are back in school. Yay. And they at least uh, can have fun again. School is going to be different because it's going to be run their own way with party cannons, um, fashion floor designs, uh, uh, indoor farm, and whatnot. Yes. Much awesomeness. I think the party cannons are the big worry. Yeah. How do you exercise safety? Because I mean, one scene, Pinky was about to blast Gallus into a wall, <laughs> loaded with mattresses, but still blasting him into a wall. True that. But still, every creature there seems willing to stay there, and Ember doesn't like songs anymore. So yes, uh, they get to stay. Even Grandpa Gruff is defeated by the puppy dog eyes. Yes, Gall- Gallus has a unique power. For all this too cool for school attitude. It's like, dude, you just lost street cred. You won the day, but you lost the yes, cred. Yes. And well, uh, after that, the day is saved by friendship. Yay. Well. So, yeah, uh, episode ends. Silver, um, final thoughts. What do you think of this one? I enjoyed it. I, I can understand why people would be hesitant about uh, a school of friendship, but there's opportunity there. It's more on the following episodes to say, did they properly utilize it? And as of the uh, season eight mid season hiatus, um, I'm going to have to give some harsh remarks on that. But as an opener, this is, I think, very strong. I think it sets things up and it get, gets me to like the students. And that's important. If I didn't like the students, we'd be in really big trouble. Uh-huh. True that, true that. I have to agree with that one, man. So I will say I enjoyed it very much. Naysay is not necessarily a villain, he is definitely antagonistic. But I'm expecting that he'll come around by season's end because that's the way it goes. And if they can redeem Starlight and Trixie and the Changelings, one ethnocentric uh, pony shouldn't be their greatest obstacle. And as for me, this episode was a lot of fun. I, I know I say that all the time, but in this one, the setup was 
a slow building setup because in the first part, we introduced to a concept that comes out of nowhere. So yes, let's roll with it and we'll see how much fun it can be. And yeah, the first part was a bit slow, but the second part of the episode kind of builds up. And I especially like the part where the students were talking in the castle of the two sisters. I, I feel like having a new um, lead to the show kind of brings the, what you call this, brings new light or bring new life to the show. I was hoping for this in season seven with Starlight and her group, but not, not really. Well, I guess you got to be careful with the new lead idea because I remember Scrubs tried to go on for one more season after their, their lead actor left. Or, you know, JD's character retired. Uh, so it didn't quite work that way, but that eh, doesn't mean it can't. Yeah, I mean, but still, I, I would like to see a nice balance of having the new and the old or introducing both of them at the same time. I know we're jumping ahead, but the, what you would call this, uh, non compete clause episode, that was not bad. Having uh, the new and the old in the same room doing stuff, that was good. We'll talk about the new non-compete clause and do in good time, but I wasn't as big a fan of how they made the teachers look bad to make the students. Oh look yeah, good. true that. But I'm just giving a good example of things that have happened without spoiling it because you know some people may have not seen it yet. So we're just trying to put a veil on things that may have or may not have happened. So on, yay, who knows? But st- <laughs> I'm not. Rosebud is the slang. Oh, no. But still, um, what's this? Um, yeah, I like this episode. The song is not bad. It's, is it me or most of the songs after season four are not memorable? Hmm. Mm. Well, since I'm having trouble remembering them, I think there's some validity yeah, I mean, to that. Okay, uh, I do remember way back in the days. Uh, I listened to a lot of pony songs. So yay, maybe I'm jaded that way, or maybe I'm biased that way. But I don't have any recollection. I mean, I remember some of the beat for the songs, but it's not in my head. It's like no winter wrap up. Like winter wrap up was special. Well, that was at their full full steam ahead. Yeah, but that was just season one. I'll have to double check. I'm not musically inclined, so I don't remember things as clearly as others might. Uh, but still, let's see. Yeah, this episode was a fun watch. I do love the introduction of the student six. And yeah, I believe that they're a good addition. Like, they're a fun way to add more characters with, well, I won't say meaning, but there is a fun way to add more characters because we get more awesomeness out of this. And we get some fun, there are some fun parallels with which student matches up with the teacher. True. Because obviously, Ocellus being so shy makes sense that Fluttershy would be her a good mm-hmm. mentor. Also, I found it adorable when Fluttershy reassured Ocellus, like, yeah. ah, my favorite yeah, yeah. And also Ocellus becomes Fluttershy hanging out with everything. Darling, 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 yeah. darling, 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 darling. But still, I, I do enjoy the uh, Student 6, yes. But anywho, Silver, what are we going to do next week? I think we're going to do something miraculous. Oh, yes, yes. I've been waiting for doing something miraculous. So... Yeah, um, next week we're just going to, well, kind of do a non-pony thing because it's been so long and I want to have a laugh and giggles. So next week we are going to review Season 2, Episode 9 of The Miraculous Ladybug, uh, titled named Glaciator. Uh, yes. <clears throat> so stay tuned for that one. It'll be fun. Trust me. It'll be so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> Come play with us. We have so much fun. They all float down here. They all float. <laughs> so anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am the Silver Quill. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of NBS Show. See ya. Adios. I do still wonder about those creatures that go to school. Why don't they say everybody? Like, why every creature? Because some of them might not have proper bodies. Don't body shame them. Are you body shaming? <laughs>